Jeremy Kyle must be delighted because uh, he and his show have been exonerated following the inquest into the tragic death of Steve Diamond. And it marks a complex moment for media accountability and the broad impact of reality TV. And while Kyle's statement declared that he had been clearly unequivocally exonerated, the coroner's findings are far more nuanced. And the Hampshire coroner, Jason Pegg, emphasised that while the Jeremy Kyle show may have been a possible factor, it wasn't the probable cause of Diamond's suicide. Other factors, including Diamond's pre-existing mental health issues and a combination of an overdose and a heart condition, played a significant role. But of course, as one of the psychiatrists said to me the other day, um, I'm going to be meeting her again on the 4th of October, uh, the, the fact that I didn't had, had didn't watch any reality TV should have been a red, red flag and I shouldn't have ever been on the show I was on. Um, I would say a much bigger red flag is a pre-existing mental health condition and a history of suicide attempts. In my case, I there's a person called Anonymous 200 or 2000 or something. I find it so irritating that some of the people um, who leave rather malicious and rather unpleasant comments, very personal comments, uh, do so under the guise of anonymity and right down to the point of calling themselves anonymous something or other. Anyway, this anonymous person uh, was irritated the other day that I said that I, I won the show. Um, I was one of the winners of uh, The Circle. Um, I was. There, there was a... Um, uh, there, there were effectively two competitions. There was a competition, uh, the um, the MacGuffin, as Hitchcock would call it, the competition of the game, uh, and in that I came third. And there was the competition of the actual programme where the audience at home votes, and I came first. And uh, I, there's a Wikipedia page um which I which I have nothing to do with, and uh, and and it says I came third in the show. That that that's very much the line of the, of the production, but it's not actually true. And I I had a very good edit, um, but it it hasn't stopped me observing the misery of some of the people who were on the show, particularly some of the people who didn't, who didn't do particularly well on the show. Um, who felt crushed by the experience. And I felt that as somebody who had been a winner, I was under an obligation to speak out. And having not watched any reality TV, I've thrown myself into looking at the stuff and looking at quite a variety of stuff. For quite for a few years, I, was, I did sort of podcast every week where I was gradually taken through each series and episode of a program called Survivor and I met a lot of the participants from that show um, a, a lot of the early participants right right from the beginning of the show and some of them had really stressful stories um, and, and really difficult journeys that they'd been on since winning or or, or not winning on that show and I, I found meeting meeting them was a, a salutary experience. Uh, as for the Jeremy Kyle thing, the the crisis occasioned by Steve Diamond's death and by the events on Love Island meant that there was a committee assembled by the um, House of Commons, and testimony was 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 taken um in 2019 but only really from production staff i think four participants were called upon to give testimony and then boris johnson called a general election and the committee stopped and was never reconvened and in the m meantime a document that gave a lot more power a lot more control to production, both during the production and following it, uh, asking production to fund psychiatric support for participants for 18 months following 
the end of the show. Uh, I, I think this is deeply wrong. It assumes that psychiatry is is a is a fix all, and the problem is psychiatrists sometimes exactly the same psychiatrists are used as part of the casting process, and then they so they're the gatekeepers as well as the help. That doesn't work. And if somebody is in the military and is going through R21 technique or R2I technique where where they're put in stress situations very similar to the stress situations which are part and parcel of the reality TV experience, then they are debriefed and given psychiatric support after only a weekend. I, I was in the show for a month and my concern is that everybody who is involved in this sort of intensive reality TV experience Everybody suffers a loss of agency. I think you surrender your agency very often when you're involved in theatre or film or television. But there is a that there is a professional and a personal arrangement that recognises the stresses, and you're able to put that back. In reality TV, because the entire industry is predicated on deceit and secrecy, the two things which we are told constantly are the problems are the loss of fame and a bad edit. Those are, those are minor results of a loss of agency. Nobody talks about the loss of agency, which is the big problem, and which is certainly the issue I would identify as being significant in the Steve Diamond case. So yes, there may not be a smoking gun, but in the same way as you, you know, the trigger doesn't kill, nor does the bullet, nor does the barrel. But put together, they, they, they each play a significant role. So I don't think that Jeremy Kyle is right by saying that the show and... His involvement in the show uh, has been completely exonerated by this inquest. The coroner's decision underscores the multiple elements that contributed to Diamond's death, which cannot be solely attributed to his appearance on the show, which was brief. But this raises the question of the ethics of such shows, which thrive on conflict and emotional exploitation, and in fact, theatrically build up that exploitative moment. And while ITV, the show's broadcaster, had processes in place for guest care, including offering counselling, it's clear that these systems are not sufficient to prevent this sort of tragedy. And no matter how much psychiatry is thrown at people, in normal life you don't throw psychiatry at people as a matter of custom. You have other systems in place to ensure that uh, the, 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 the stresses of work can be managed. And if psychiatry is necessary, it should be there as part of the routine, not as something that you call on once you're in a mess. Because if you're in a mess, it may be too late. So one must consider the broader role of reality television in exacerbating vulnerability. Shows like The Jeremy Kyle Show often prey on individuals at their most fragile, as indeed does social media, positioning them for public judgment and ridicule. In Diamond's case, the results of the polygraph test, um, later questioned for its reliability, intensified the distress that he was already in, with Kyle reportedly using provocative language during the broadcast. Public humiliation. While Carr denied accusations of humiliation and claimed that his role was one of conflict resolution, the footage tells quite a different story of a man visibly in distress, visibly being bullied. Now, Kyle may not have been in control of what he was doing. There's a man whispering in his ear anyway, or a woman. Production, whispering in his ear. 
What this case exemplifies <clears throat> is a pattern where entertainment content comes into direct conflict with human dignity. And the coroner's findings might legally clear Kyle, but they don't absolve the show's culture of sensationalism and exploitation. And what is true about Jeremy Kyle today is true about almost any other big reality TV show. Public outrage and concern over the death of Steve Diamond were key reasons for the cancellation of The Jeremy Kyle Show, a programme that ran for 14 years but that was accused of promoting a toxic culture, toxic content, toxic elements under the guise of resolving personal issues. It was offering help, but it was promoting itself. It's, uh, it's a vicious and it's a nasty form of deception. Um, while Carl may be personally exonerated, the ethical quest questions surrounding reality TV remain then. And the balance between entertainment and responsibility is critical. And although the show has been taken off air, the instant serves as a cautionary tale for future media practices. How much responsibility should broadcasters bear for the well-being of their participants? How much responsibility should the host bear for the quality of the show itself? How much should we, um, how much should we hold Rylan responsible for dating naked? Um, Emma Willis. You know. Uh, the people you see are not necessarily the people responsible in reality TV. And this is another issue which is really important. The people behind the scenes that the audience never sees. The audience sees a, a confection, an invention. And then it makes a judgment on the, base, on the basis of this illusion, this sleight of hand. Um, it's, it's arrogant to think that simply because you watch the programme you understand what's going on. Or simply because you've read a Wikipedia article, you, you, you know. Jeremy Carr's personal exoneration, I keep coming back to this word, exoneration, because I don't, I don't think it's enough. And I don't think a legal approach to this is the right approach. What we need to do is look at this programme and draw conclusions to move forward. And production was very happy with the idea of, yeah, everything can be resolved by psychiatry. But who are these psychiatrists? Anybody can pretty well call themselves a psychiatrist. What is the qualification? The people who visited me on the, the circle, I don't know what their qualification was. What is a psychiatrist? Um, psychiatric support. What is this? Is it somebody, uh, as I later discovered, somebody just going down a checklist? Do you have suicidal thoughts? And then they go on to the next one. That's not help. That's bureaucracy. Um, you know, the broader culture, the treatment of ordinary people in the media and how their pain is used for public entertainment. So I say, sleight of hand. Um, but, 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 but essentially, it's that hand job which is, which is the entertainment. Not the... You don't think about the people involved in all that handy business. The people, the real people who are the subject of the programme. The inquest, while closing a legal chapter, therefore, after five years, leaves open a moral dialogue about the consequences of reality TV. It's something I hope to address on the 4th of October in the Leeds Playhouse. So um, I, I think there's still some tickets available. Do come.